My recent work is about inequality. Inequalities of income and in wealth. Where did these come from? Uh, how are they understood in the past? And it's important to know that this subject does have a past. It has a history. It's a hot topic these days. The recent uh, increase in gaps between rich and poor uh, has attracted a lot of attention among scholars, but also the general public. I mean, a few years ago, we had you know a big international protest movement, Occupy Wall Street, that was focusing on precisely this question, inequality. And we know that uh, income distributions have been widening in Canada, the United States, and elsewhere uh, since some point in the 1980s. So it's become a hot topic, but it's not a new topic. In fact, it's an old topic. In Canada, I study, for instance, the discovery of inequality as a social problem a century ago, in the early 20th century. It was a topic widely discussed in the newspapers, in the universities, among Canadian economists of the time, and some of the best-known books by well-known Canadian authors uh, were on that subject. The well-known uh, political economist at McGill, uh, Stephen Leacock, also, of course, very well known as one of Canada's greatest humorists, wrote a book in 1920 called The Unsolved A Riddle of Social Justice. And that book was entirely about the problem of inequality. And it offered his solutions. And he was just one of many who were writing books and articles about the problem of inequality and how, uh, how it should be dealt with, or sometimes not dealt with. Um, so they proposed solutions. They analyzed the problem. They proposed solutions. Uh, those solutions may indeed, in part, have worked. We don't know. So it's important that we study this, that we study how our ancestors uh, discovered the problem, what solutions they applied, what solutions did work, what did not work. And to the extent that there was a lessening of inequality, as there was in Canada by the 1950s and 1960s, we need to know much more about why that happened in order to understand why that uh, shrinking of inequality ended in the 1980s and the gaps continue. It's a very important and very urgent problem for today and also then for historians. The subject of inequality reminds us that there are often old problems that resurface in our own time. They're changed, they're different, but in order to address them today, we have to understand why and how they were different in the past. Inequality, at least a century ago, was framed as not just an economic problem, but a moral issue, a compelling moral issue. And that's the grounds on which much of the debate was occurring. And I think that's a difference from today. I don't see quite the intense discussion of the ethics of inequality today as perhaps we ought to have. So that's just one example of where looking at the past can help us to reframe the way in which we look at a particular problem today. It also relates, I think, to the wider value of history. I'm often asked, you know, what is history for? And, you know, I do talks in high schools, for instance, uh, and I often uh, meet with parents of high school students. And I know high school students today are often asked by their parents, why would you want to take a course in history? What, what's the use of that? Well, the answer is, of course, that without history, you don't have a very well-informed society. It's like, if you don't have history, imagine what it's like if you don't have history. That would be like having amnesia. Uh, an absence of history is a social amnesia. If you have uh, that level of amnesia, you don't know where you've been. You don't know where, you, where we are in the present because you don't know how we got here. And therefore, you don't know where you're going in the future. It's not that history gives you specific lessons about how we should behave or how we should change this or that. It's much more important than that. If you don't have history, you don't have any memory, and you don't know where you came from, you don't know who you are, and you don't know where you're going. That's the value of history. And I think, you know, the subject of inequality is just one example of that. If you don't know anything about the subject as it existed in the past and the reality of inequality, you're not in a very good position to deal with it in the present and the future, are you?